during a retreat, I was telling everybody about shadows, and I had this long, laborious definition of what shadows are. And one of my younger students looked at me, and he says, Oh, shadow's just the me that I can't see. And I said, Yes, that's what a shadow is. <laughs> it's the me that you can't see that you keep stumbling over because you can't see it. And uh, anybody have shadows? <laughs> As my dear friend Roger Walsh, who's Ken Wilber's oldest friend, he's a psychiatrist. He says, everybody has shadows. I don't care if you're a Zen master or if you're a spiritual teacher or a president of the United States. <laughs> everybody has shadows. And that's been my experience. I know I have many. <laughs> so where do they come from? Isn't that an interesting question? You know? What I found working with shadows, and I have had to work on shadows because I have so many, is at the core of every shadow, I find an emotion that has been suppressed. Emotions are suppressed. They're pushed down. Subpersonalities that are connected to those emotions are repressed. They're disowned. They're cut off. This is really important to understand because the connection between the suppressed emotions and the disowned subpersonality is really critical. That's what happens so often in our culture. We suppress emotions especially in a culture where everybody thinks they're entitled to feel good. Where did you learn that? This is life. It doesn't always feel good. And the minute you expect it to have to feel good, that means you're turning your back on everything that feels bad. And you're cutting off parts of yourself that you critically need to be whole. Does that ring any bells? <laughs> And you pay a huge price when you do that, individually and collectively as you try to get things done in a community. It's incredible work. And I've got news for you. Doing shadow work feels like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's how you know you're doing shadow work. You feel like shit. You're reclaiming parts of yourself that you have found so disgusting that you repressed them. You got rid of them or tried to get rid of them. The only problem is you can't get rid of them. <laughs> They're still active. A subpersonality that's been repressed and disowned continues to act. If you want to know what my shadows are, all you have to do is ask my wife. <laughs> She can see them all. And I, I do quite frequently. I say, sweetheart, would you please let me know when I'm doing something really stupid that I can't see? And boy, she loves that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very helpful. It's very helpful. In our community, we empower everybody to chirp like canaries in coal mines when they see the Roshi as a shadow. And we have an integrity uh, circle that it's their responsibility to sort out whether it's the Roshi shadow or whether it's the person saying the Roshi has a shadow. <laughs> and we have processes to actually work through these. This is critically important. It's critically important. In our Sangha, we really need to have strong leadership. And we need to really keep track of these leaders and make sure that they're not acting out of shadow because that's really harmful. So we have processes to really check, checks and balances. Kind of like we used to have in the United States government <laughs> before things polarized. 